hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is maritza if you haven't subscribed if you are new please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now i am about to do an interview with one of my sponsors that sponsored me for my last fight so i wanted to hop on and record my own video i have a, this little setup my phone i'm gonna be speaking with him for a little bit so i hope you guys enjoy this little interview and if you aren't subscribed go ahead and subscribe okay guys i'm about to hop on and go live with him so let's go ahead and see if we can get this I'm kind of nervous i haven't done an interview in a while <laughs> I'm writing down my sponsors because if you ask me about my sponsors, I don't want to forget anyone. Okay, here we go. Hello? Hey. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Are you able to... Yeah. Is this okay? Is this a good setup here? Yeah, it's great. Okay, cool. Should I just get, get ready for this? Or? Uh, no, I had... I went to church before <laughs> this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, cover sheet up first, and I'll start the recording, and then I'll do an intro, and then okay. we'll get right into it. It's just 10 easy questions, a couple of follow-ups. Shouldn't take more than 20 minutes at the absolute most. Okay, that's that's fine. That's perfect. Ready to record. All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Simpson, and today I'm joined by a special guest, uh, Combate Global's. Number one flyweight, Maritza Sanchez. How are you doing today, Maritza? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's good to have you here. So you are fresh off a first-round TKO win over Deep Begley back on November 18th. Your first win via strikes. How does that feel? Oh, it feels great. It, it's, uh, you know, I, I was trying to process it for so long after, right after the fight. Um feels amazing you know my it just goes to show my hard work is is really put out there and I was able to showcase my skills that night yeah so um, I noticed it was the left I guess it was a hook to the liver after right after you blocked her high kick that started the uh, fight ending sequence is that something you worked on a lot in training you seem to like really hone in on that opening yeah that's uh something that one of my uh me and my boxing coach Abraham um we like we like to work on that. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, punches that I like to throw. So, just like I guess it kind of just came naturally. One of those things where you just drill it so much that it just happens to to come in naturally. And um, I was able to put that, I guess, uh, part of the play into finish finishing the fight. I noticed you also like to, like to uh, mix up the strike. You were mixing the strikes really well to both the head and the body like you would go to the body to open up the head and then as soon as you start blocking the head more you'd go back to the body is that something you practice a lot yeah you know um something that i i like to teach as well because i also coach as well um you know it's it's uh the body's open when when you go upstairs but they you know especially if they bring their hands up body's going to be open always so uh something that i that i do practice a lot okay. i noticed that actually both of you utilize the uh, sidekick a lot and at one point you used it to hurt her again I think it was like the second time you like really had her rocked was off of a sidekick straight to the stomach now is that something new for you because I don't recall seeing you throwing it too much in previous fights um I it's just one of those things that I haven't really used in a fight um but I do practice that as well um, I try to mix it up a lot um, when I'm training, so uh, you just I guess you just never know. That's the way to go, right? Sure. So about your training, now do you train specifically for your opponents, or do you train more to fight your own fight and implement your plan going in? I like to um, I like to focus on what I do, and I try not to worry about too much of what my my opponent's gonna do. Um, I just like to take a quick glance at, you know, what their style is kind of like, and then uh, based off that, uh, get a little visual visualization, and then just worry about what I'm going to do throughout my camp. Okay. Um, 
Now, all of your fights so far have been with uh, Combate Global, or all of your pro fights. How do you like fighting for them, and how do you, how do you like working with them? Oh, I love working with them. They're they're honestly such an amazing promotion, and I couldn't be more grateful um, to be with with them. They 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 treat you so so well, and honestly, I'm I'm very grateful for the whole team. Okay, so taking it back to the beginning, how did you or when did you get started in uh, martial arts? Like, how old were you? I was, I started training when I was 15, about to be 16, I believe. Um, so it's been a few years now. I'm about to be 25 next month. So, um. Oh, you're ancient. <laughs> what's that? I said you're ancient. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so I've been training for a couple years. I mean, I didn't take it as serious as now um obviously i would just kind of just train whenever i wanted to it was just kind of like i kind of just did it just for exercise and for fun but um yeah especially after um my because my few amateur first amateur fights i actually lost a couple and uh, i was like okay i really gotta do something about this like i'm gonna really you know take my training more serious a bit and i think right after a few uh amateur fights it's when i was like okay I really got into it and um, made it, wanted to make it my career, so I ended up like quitting my job and stuff. Oh wow, okay, so did you start training like, like traditional martial arts or did you just like find an MMA gym and start training the mix like right away? Um, so when I first started training, um, I mainly kind of just liked the boxing. Um, so I did that I think mainly for about a year. I did a little bit of kickboxing here and there. But I didn't start jiu-jitsu until like maybe two years after I was introduced to um, boxing. Okay. Uh, now you had 11 amateur fights before turning pro and you said you started training full-time even during when you were amateur. Now, when you made the decision to go pro, like what was that process like? Was it a specific, after a specific fight? Or was it just something that you had planned, like, we'll get X amount of fights in and then we'll go pro? Or what was, basically, what was the process to uh, decide to turn pro? So, um, I, I honestly would have liked to get some more amateur fights, to be honest with you. But, um, I don't know. It was just one of those things where, um, I, it was hard for me to get fights, especially as a woman in this, uh, type of sport there wasn't very many especially in the amateur amateurs so um we were just kind of like you know what uh, we kind of made the decision to just uh go pro and we figured there'd be more um opportunity to get uh some more fights yeah it seems like especially in the amateurs it's harder for uh the ladies to find fights and that's why you'll see a lot of ladies go pro with like well, a lot less fights than yeah that. yeah yeah and it's it's surprising yeah, right yeah. And some of them just don't skip the amateurs. Like, I remember there was a period, uh, like, I remember, I think it was Josh Barnett, who just said, you know, ladies should just skip the amateurs, just turn pro. Yeah, As but... Going now, like, there, you see a lot more ladies' amateur fights. Yeah, I think, I think so, too, now. Um, I, I mean, the sport's growing, and you, you can see it, right? There's Especially, uh, you know, I feel like a lot more women are starting to join now that they see how how uh how it's been expanding with um women being able to come in and you know also take over yeah that's part of the reason why i started this channel it's been yeah, that's awesome yeah about five years now so that's great that's great that's, that's the goal is to help you know grow the sport and grow the, help grow the uh, ladies divisions okay so moving away from fighting for a second uh, let's talk about you. So what makes Maritza Sanchez, Maritza Sanchez? Like, what do you enjoy doing away from fighting? Um, I like to, um, I have my little side hobby of, uh, this YouTube channel that I have. Um, I've been doing it for a couple years now. Um, but I honestly just like doing it just for fun as well. Um, so I do that off the side and then I also, uh, I also like hiking. I like hiking, I like the outdoors, and just, you know, spending time with family and friends and whatnot. Okay, any, like, hobbies, or just the YouTube and the hiking? Yeah, just hiking. I'm not, you know, 
I'm just casual, just hiking, vlogging, nothing crazy. Okay. Uh, you have a favorite cheat food. So it's your off day, you're going to cheat. What do you eat? <laughs> that is one of the hardest questions because I love food. Um, but if I really had to pick, I think the first thing that I like like to eat after a fight is just a nice hamburger with some french fries. Oh, that was going to be my next follow-up question. What's your favorite post-fight <laughs> meal? So, big greasy burger and Yeah, fries. absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there a favorite uh, restaurant you like to go to for a burger? No, just anywhere, really. You can be... Yes, Eddie, as long as it's a nice meal, I'll be happy with it. That Italian. Yes, absolutely. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Mine would probably be pizza, but a burger sounds good too. Yeah. But I'll take anything. Well, I saw you, uh, speaking of your YouTube channel earlier, I saw on your uh, Fight Week vlog, after your fight, you were eating pizza with Begley. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like I right after. That's kind of interesting. Well, right after the fight, um, when we were still in the cage, I was like, uh, we were shaking hands with the coaches and, you, you know, and I said, hey, let's go get some drinks after. And they're like, yeah, you know, they're super cool. So we actually ran into them at the hotel that we both were staying at. And, um, you know, we we're just hanging out to chat and her and her corner, my corner, we we're just hanging out and having a good time eating. And she's super cool, super cool. Because I know, like, for most fighters, it's like, it's, it's a job, like, they don't hold any grudges, but yeah. you see someone, like, knock someone else out, and then they're eating pizza afterwards. Yeah, it's, you know, that's how, cool. that's how it should be, honestly. I mean, it's just business. It's, we're just here for business. And I, and I get that. I've never gotten to the point where I, like, oh, I hate my opponent even afterwards, but, um, I guess you just never know. But, I mean, you should always be respectful and, and be able to, you know, at least be able to say, hey, thank you, you know, good job, and that's about it, right? There's not much sure. more you could say after, but, yeah. Sure, I mean, it's, it's a sport. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I, know, I know some people, it's like everything to them, but I think at the end of the day, it is a sport. Like, it's not like a personal, you're being, you're both being paid. Well, it could be personal, right? Sure. Some other I people have, like... There are grudge matches. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have a dream place you would like to fight? Like, is there a certain country or city or even, like, an arena that you would love to fight above any others? Um, uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it, but I know that hopefully we're going to start traveling soon. Um, and they had mentioned Europe. So, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, I just want to be able to fight everywhere, you know, but, uh, that would be pretty cool. Europe sounds cool. Anywhere outside of the TV studio, I think would be great. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, it, but it's like, come on, it's going to be 2023, get out there. I know, I know. It's yeah, like, okay, not. COVID's gone. Like we need the audience back. And I mean, I honestly really like fighting without the audience audience. It's like, it's definitely different. Um, I, I just feel like I'm more zoned in for whatever reason. You don't, you don't get the jitters as much with everyone being around and, you know, right, cheering you know, or trapped, booing. Yeah. You can hear your coaches. Exactly, yeah. You can hear every punch, every kick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so besides locate dream opponent, is there anybody? And you could pick from like, retire, long retire, just... If you could fight anybody, who would you want to fight? Anybody. Um, let, I would say possibly Amanda Nunez. Um, I do plan on going up in weight. And, you know, that's just one of the cool things that you could say. Like, hey, I'd like to fight this person. Um, I think she's a badass. But, um, hey, you never know. Right, well, hey, if you're going to go, you're gonna die, <laughs> right? She's one of the best. Yeah, definitely. Ever. Yeah, for sure. If you're going to aim high, then... You yeah, you have to. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So, what are your long-term MMA goals? Well, I would like to be world champ someday. Sure. Um, 
eventually hopefully get into the UFC after this contract that I have with Combate. Um, but you know, you never know. Um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes afterwards. Sure. And you're still young. You're only 25, so. I'm going to be 25, yes. Oh, you're going to be 25. Yes. You've got a lot of time. I'm, <laughs> I'm the old one here. <laughs> you're, you're entering 2023 as number one in Combate's flyweight division. So if Combate were to offer you a title fight next year, who would you like to face off? Uh, you know what? I think it would just make sense to fight the uh, person that's right underneath me, which is Melissa Amaya. She's number two. Um, she's undefeated right now. I believe she's 5-0. and oh. And um, she deserves it. I deserve it. I think that's what's next, honestly. Well, I'll be honest. That's the uh, fight I'd like to see more than any others. Yeah. You versus Melissa. I think that'd be fireworks. Both I think so, fight. too. You're both good on the ground. Uh, you only have one loss. She's undefeated. I mm -hmm. think that's the fight to make. Number one versus number two. Yeah. And Ruben Combate, you know, gets it done. Yeah. Hey, I asked for it after my fight, so. And um, she's undefeated, like I said, so I think it just makes sense to to get that match up uh, sure. and right underneath the title. So I think she'd be down for it, too. Oh, yeah, Especially definitely. So yeah, definitely. Shiny gold belt. Yeah, who wouldn't want that, right? Right. Who doesn't <laughs> want shiny gold stuff? Okay, so that's really all the questions I have. So, do you have any uh, social media you want to plug? Um. Well, I do have my YouTube channel if you guys would like to subscribe. It's just my name, Maritza Sanchez. Um, I post a lot of vlogs, like what I do on the daily or... Uh, a couple videos here and there on some trips that I go on. So, yeah, if you'd like to check that out, you can check that out. So you also have, a, I believe, a Twitter and an Instagram that I'll share down below. Yeah, I have an Instagram and Twitter as well. But uh, I definitely recommend to the viewers, go check out Maritza's YouTube and go check out the uh, Fight Week vlog. It's two parts, and you'll actually see her in the room with her coach practicing that left hook that she landed, so... Yep. To the bottom. Yeah, yep, it's it's all in wow. there. I was able to catch that on there that we were yeah. drilling. Uh, any sponsors you want to shout out? Yes, I uh, made sure to make a list here so I don't forget any of them. But first, I'd like to thank my uh, my team, my coaches, Team Alpha Mill, um, AB's Dragon House. Uh, he's he's my main boxing boxing coach, Abraham. And then I also have Felipe Braccio, BJJ. He is a uh, uh, my jiu-jitsu coach. And then uh, as for my sponsors, I'd like to thank you. Thank you, uh, WMAC now for sponsoring me for my last fight. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I also have Little by Little. It's a clothing line. Um, Castillo's Legal Life Support. Royal Six Tattoo. Uh, Luis Romo Photography. Kill Aesthetics, and last but not least, Red Hot Casino. All right, so go check those sponsors out. Help those that help the fighters. Yes. And uh, really, I was really uh, happy to work with you, and uh, glad I could help help you out. Uh, first time sponsoring a fighter for me, so of course you came more than came through. I mean, no matter if you went well. Yeah, of course it matters. Like, <laughs> it does matter, but yeah. we got the W, yeah. so. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was great. I mean, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and then when you put it out there on your, I think it was Instagram, that you were looking. I said, "Well, there's one. That's the one." Yeah, no, I I appreciate it, and um, cool. I'm happy to uh to be sponsored by you. So uh, thank you, and you guys make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. WMMA yeah. scene now. That's right. The best, fastest growing women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, yeah. and thank you, Maritza. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yep. And we'll see you next time. And we're out. Thank you, Maritza. Hey. That was awesome. And thank you. Only, yeah, you're only my second interview, so. What's that? I said you're only the second fighter I've ever interviewed. Oh, really? The other one was last year, so I'm resting. I feel honored. <laughs>
Sure. Well, thank you so much, and I just want to uh, quickly apologize for uh, not being able to do it when we first uh, had planned it out. Um, I had something come up, and yeah, so I was ho I'm glad we got to reschedule and get it done. I understand, you know, I'm close to my family, so I get it. Family's got to come first. Yeah, I know, but thank you so much for having me, and uh, hopefully we speak sometime soon. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you'll get uh, fight news soon. Oh yeah, definitely. I think uh, their combat is not coming back till mid-February or like early March. So I have some time till they come back. But uh, I'll be hopefully hopping on if possible as soon as they can. Yes, yeah, yeah, just uh, let me know and we'll get you back oh, on. Yeah. Start uh, prepping and get that fight, uh, get the hype going. Yeah, for sure. No, just thank you. I appreciate that. It was nice talking to you. Me too. All right, take care. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. It was so nice. Oh, shoot. I haven't done an interview in a while, you guys. Um, but that was really awesome. He was super sweet. And make sure to go subscribe to his channel as well on YouTube. It's WMMA Scene Now. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little interview. I should, I should have showed you guys um, or introduced him to my little vlogging camera but make sure you guys are subscribed if you aren't subscribed and i will see you guys in my next video bye